everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm the founder of Code of the Future and today we're going to be continuing with the Rust course where I'm teaching you all about Rust for beginners. Before we dive into the tutorial, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you are new to the channel. But with that said, I'll put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, so in the last section we looked at control flow, so that's things like conditions, compound conditions, and then we looked at a bit of shorthand for else and if statements. Then we looked at a whole range of different loops. So now we are going into tutorial 10 and I've created a tutorial 10 folder which is here. Um, yeah, and as I say in all my videos this code will be on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description so we no longer need that. And today we are going to be looking at what is known as user or console input. So let's write it out. We're going to be looking at collecting user input. Now if any of you remember, well let's say if any of you have watched my Python beginner playlist, I did a kind of a little project on there which was uh, to do with collecting user input and making your own, you know, figuring out what percentage you got at the end of your year if you were studying as a student. Um, it incorporated a few different elements of, of Python in that video but that heavily looked at collecting user input. So the idea behind user input is that you can say, okay, ask, let's say you ask the user something, so say input your age, and then you, as the person that's using this, uh, if, you know, using your laptop, you can input your age. So that's the whole point of today. We're going to be looking at how you do that in Rust. It's a little bit more complicated than it is in Python, but that's okay. We're going to walk you through the entire thing and I'm going to show you exactly how you do it. So looking at collecting user input. Now in order to collect user input you need to import a separate library or package uh, and just as a side note libraries and packages are known as a crate in rust so if you hear me say crate then just know i'm referring to a package or library but i think i'll usually just stick to the general term of of library so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start top of here and we're just going to say importing input or output so what we're going to write here is we're just going to put use std so that stands for standard library colon colon io right now i'm just gonna put a little comment here uh use is kind of how you i suppose import well we'll just put use a specific library or we'll say package or crate um the std that stands for standard standard library or again package or crate then io this uh, we'll just put module we need to get user input and it stands for input output um, which is what I'll put here okay so we we've imported this we're using this standard library now in rust we have what is known as prelude and that is essentially all of the stuff that's already imported kind of automatically there when we start our Rust program. So it's things like knowing that this is the main function, knowing that this will print a line, um, stuff, standard stuff like that. And Prelude covers quite a lot. It generally covers almost everything that you need when you are beginner, you know, beginner Rust uh, coder and doing some basic things. But then as you start making your projects a bit more complex, you will need to import a few new libraries or packages, which is what we're doing today. So that's just generally what this means here we're importing input output so we can collect our user input um, and this is not included in the prelude. Now one thing I didn't mention was well were the semicolons here uh, and this is the path separator operator I think goodness me separator operator um, I think that's spelled correctly um, and that allows us to go into a package or a crate or a library uh, and then into a module we want. We can then we can then go from that module to a specific function or method. Okay, so that's essentially what the semi the two the two colons here mean. Um, and you'll see this a lot when we move on to a bit some you know a bit more advanced stuff. Um, generally using libraries. Okay, so in the main function, which I'll just enter down here so we've got a bit more space, in the main function we no longer want to print hello world. We're going to assign a new variable and it's going to be mutable, which means we can then alter it later. We're going to assign it to input because I guess 
quite intuitively. That's that's what we're doing. We're then going to write string with a capital S, colon, colon, new, and then open and close brackets with a semicolon. And I'm just going to explain what this is. So we know already that let mut input is creating a mutable variable. We've learned that in our previous sections. Then here, string is a type in Rust standard library. We have the colon, colon, new. And this is new it, new is a function of the string type. So new is basically a function of this string type that we have here. Again, the colon colon is explained up here. Uh, it follows the same idea of, you, you know, you can take string, which is a type in Rust, and then we can co recall a method or a specific module or function from that. And all this, mm, this function here uh, does is it creates a brand new string. So this is going to create a brand new empty string. And the idea is there's nothing in, inputted into here. So I'll just say this, well, this returns an empty string. Now the reason we want it to be mutable is because we then want to assign this string to whatever we input. Okay, so now we have created an empty string, we're going to collect the user input. This has a few different features to it, so don't worry, we're going <laughs> to explain everything. Um, I guess we'll put here collecting user input. And all we're going to say is io colon colon standard input, that's what it stands for, dot read line, read underscore line, we're going to pass a reference to a mutable input and then we're going to say dot, I'm just going to put this, expect. And in here we're going to say failed to read line. Okay, so that was quite of a mouthful and we'll just talk you, you know, I'm going to talk you through each, what each of the things mean. So S, S standard input gives us a handle to the standard input of the current process. This is fan a fancy way of basically just saying the terminal where you're going to write your, your word, I guess. Okay, so that's the standard. Here we're just getting the IO module, which is what we've imported here. Now the read line is quite simply just takes in the user's input and in here it's going to append whatever we have to our input. So in this takes in the user's input and appends it to the specified buffer, which in our case is a string. Okay, so that's what this is. Now you don't need to worry too much about what this ampersand means here. I'm going to be explaining that in a later video, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking a mutable reference to our input and it, you know that that's a little bit confusing don't worry i'm going to make a whole video on, on what ampersands mean now this final part that says the dot dot expect this is something that is a key feature to rust and it's also something that i'll get onto in later videos rust is a language that likes to kind of think you know well, what happens if something doesn't happen how do you account for that and this is exactly what this does that may might make <laughs> that might not make a lot of sense but i'll explain here. Okay, so how I'm going to illustrate what this dot expect does is I'm going to actually show you the document to do with what this read line command does here. So here we have is this std dot dot result. And essentially what happens is this read line here returns a result type. So I'm just going to say, we'll put down here, read line returns a result type. And when we go on the document, we'll notice that that's either an OK or an error. And I'll just put that here. Either returns OK or an error. So what Rust is making us do is Rust is making us account for if an error occurs. So what happens if if you if you omit this expect, you won't get you know you won't get an error you'll get a warning and it'll be telling you you need to input this really just in case this read line you know in case we input something that isn't rust can't read i guess uh, is an easy way of putting it so this may seem like a whole you know a whole topic on collecting user input but i just want you to understand the things that underpin how you collect user input it's something that you need to be able to do in rust because it's quite a difficult language especially if you are 
you know, someone that's just used to coding in a in a language like Python, that things are a bit more intuitive in Python, I would say. Um, so yeah, so that's just making us account for if, if an error occurs and it forces us, forces us to handle an error case. So if that happens, then we just say expect fail to read line. So that's what would happen is if, if we inputted the wrong thing. So as an overview, we got the standard input function here and we got that from the IO module. We then used the read line method and inputted a mutable reference to where we want to store our input. And then we do the expect and that's just to catch if any errors occur. Okay, so that's a bit of a long winded way of explaining what's happened. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna print our input. Okay, so let's cargo run, get terminal going and press enter. Okay, we have an error and that is because I believe I have missed a semicolon somewhere. Have I missed a semicolon? I believe I have. And also here, you'd think I would remember to input my semicolons again. I missed it at the top. Cargo run. Let's go again. Okay. So notice how this here, not you know, it hasn't entered. We have my cursor here. Now, if you're on a windows this should blink at you mine's not currently blinking but it's basically just saying look you can type anything you want in so like hello world how are you press enter and then it prints back my input that i've used cool we can cargo run again i'm gonna put hi please subscribe to code of the future hey there we go <laughs> uh you know hello whatever oh that didn't work because i didn't do cargo run um but again Hello, how are you? Code of the future here. You know, exactly how it works. So I've realized I've talked for long enough as it is on this video about you collecting user and console input. I'm gonna separate the next part um, from this part and we're gonna be looking at command line arguments, which is something similar to this. But this video here is basically giving you an, you know, understanding the, I guess, what underpins user and console, user console input in Rust. It's quite, it's kind of difficult to get your head around. Um, but yeah, this has been quite a long winded way of explaining it to you, but I hope, I hope it makes some, you know, makes sense. If not, then refer to the Rust document because there's a little bit more about that on there, but that has been user and console input in Rust. So that was the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you aren't already subscribed to the channel. Comment if you fancy commenting. I also have a donation page and a Patreon set up for exclusive behind the scenes footage, uh, if you fancy checking that out. Um, but yeah, as I said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.